On September 16, 1975, Papua New Guinea became an independent nation and began in earnest its own journey into the 21st century. Virtually the last inhabited place on Earth explored by Europeans, Papua New Guinea is a democracy of three and a half million people, searching for a route into the heart of today's global economy. That path begins in the wild, rugged land that shaped the culture and history of the people and holds the resources that will provide their future. The terrain of Papua New Guinea is spectacular in its sheer power and diversity. On the coastal lowlands, mangrove swamps fringe some of the most beautiful rivers in the world. In the highlands, a range of jagged limestone peaks climb 13,000 feet and from a constant veil of mist, plunge into emerald valleys. This is the topography that divides the people into thousands of isolated villages, tribes, and clans. The dense remote wilderness creates so much separation that over the centuries, 700 different languages have developed in Papua New Guinea. The land revealed enticing geological clues, and in the early 1920s, the British began the search for oil in Papua New Guinea. Gulf Oil took up the challenge about 20 years ago, and with Chevron's acquisition of Gulf in 1984, our company stepped up its commitment to exploration in this promising land. Concentrating in the Southern Highlands province, Chevron and its joint venture partners discovered an estimated 200 million recoverable barrels of sweet white crude in the Yagafu, Hadinya, and Agogo fields. In December of 1990, the government of PNG approved development plans for the nation's first commercial oil production project. Named after the lake located east of the oil fields, the Kudabu project is a joint venture operated by Chevron New Guinea. The partners include Papua New Guinea government, British Petroleum, Ampelex Group, BHP Petroleum, Merlin Petroleum, and Oil Search PNG. In the summer of 1992, the first oil from 23 wells is scheduled to flow through a central production facility and down a buried pipeline 165 miles long, reaching a marine tanker terminal 25 miles off the southern coast. More than 3,000 workers, three quarters of them Papua New Guinean people, labored at the peak of the project's construction phase. But building the foundation for the project, community and government relations, began almost five years earlier, literally at the grassroots level with the issue of land ownership. In Papua New Guinea, we, there is no written title to land as you get in, a, in the Western world. People own land, not as individuals, but as members of a clan. They own their land and their proof of ownership of land is by oral history, passed down from generation to generation. It was quite fascinating to me to look at all that land and realize that it's owned by somebody, but you don't really know who, you can't go down to a county courthouse and look up a deed and say, oh yeah, we know who owns that. You have to go out and ask whoever's out there will tell you who owns it. On foot, in dugout canoes and by helicopter, Chevron's team of land and community relations officers, better known as LACROS, set out to establish a working relationship with people living in the project areas. In villages near the oil fields and along the pipeline route, clansmen and LACROS gathered. Often meeting in tribal longhouses, LACROS listened, and for the first time in most cases, recorded on paper the generational histories and legends that established land ownership. Land ownership establishment enabled Chevron LACROS and landowners to arrange compensation for land use and access. For the landowners and the government of PNG, the Kudabu project will provide hundreds of millions of dollars, create jobs, and in turn strengthen a cash economy now in its infancy. PNG is a very young country, and still 80% of the people rely on traditional agriculture, uh, farming, hunting, gardening for their subsistence, so it has a very small cash economy. The cash economy has been driven for many years by some of the large natural resource developments, uh, like some of the big mining projects. This is the first commercial oil project, and the cash flow from it is going to kind of see PNG through the 1990s and uh, how they use that money to finance education, rural development, medical care, and so on will be key to the success of the development of the country. The people see the project as the key to them improving their lives. Included in the terms of the project is the commitment to assist local people in the development of their own businesses, enterprises to help villagers strengthen their economy after the project's booming construction phase slows down. Along with the LACROS, Chevron staff of business development officers work in the field listening, teaching, and guiding landowner business groups and individuals who are interested in taking advantage of opportunities generated by the Kudabu project. My job is to help them how to use money, how to bank money, in, and how to make money, how to invest their money. Chevron pays them a compensation. So we don't want them to use that money up. So we must you know, try to tell them to invest that money and make, make profit and keep the money rolling instead of just finishing up in one day. After select tree harvests, lumber from a sawmill operated by a landowner business group is sold to the Kudabu project and other PNG construction companies. Some landowner business groups pooled their resources and, with Chevron assistance, financed the purchase of road building equipment for lease to the project and other landowner companies. PNG business people are engaged in enterprises to help build camps, roads, and the pipeline. A catering company, air transportation services, and a security personnel company are owned and operated by landowner business groups. 
The Kudamu Project also provides training in welding, carpentry, safety and first aid, skills that can lead to jobs, and valuable knowledge that can be carried back to local villages. Basic businesses adapted to traditional village life are encouraged. He helped me how to uh, plant the pineapple. And he, uh, he told me that uh, if you plant pineapple, uh, those people who are going out and work for somebody will not have, have enough money. But those people who stay in the village and plant your own pineapple, banana and vegetables will get more amount than those people who go out and work for somebody. Business development officers provide technical advice and often seeds, as well as the contacts necessary to arrange transportation and marketing. Making the smallest possible footprint in the rainforest is the goal embodied in the project's environmental plan, which was approved by the government of Papua New Guinea in 1990. I think the um, effort by Chevron um, in, in terms of its environmental consciousness in this project in Papua New Guinea is probably the best. Um, of any major project development in this country. It's set an example for other investors in the resource extraction industry in Papua New Guinea. There's been a, a, a concern by Chevron to uh, be extremely sensitive to the landowners, how they interact with um, uh, their own environment, and how this, the, the production of oil is going to affect that environment. Production facilities were specifically engineered to be as compact as possible, and located in a valley outside the watershed of Lake Kudabu. The 20-inch diameter pipeline will be buried, which helps to shield the pipe and in the long run, helps to preserve trees. By burying the pipeline, the width of the pipeline corridor is significantly reduced and forest clearance minimized. The corridor's narrow. There's a lot of uh, sources of seed and such along that long rainforest corridor. So it's going to regrow very, very rapidly. Within six to nine months, you'll have a meter or two of cover on there. For 23 miles, the pipeline is underwater. The marine pipeline section, carefully laid by barge, follows the Kokori River Channel and avoid sensitive mangrove islands on the coast. We'll come in with a trenching machine which will um, self-propel itself down the pipeline and dig the trench below the line and lower the line automatically into the trench. The buried pipeline, encased in cement, is protected from ship traffic, currents, and the movements of the riverbed. A sophisticated monitoring and control system known as MAX is installed at both ends of the pipeline to be sure that the same amount of oil enters the pipeline and leaves it during tanker loading at the marine terminal. At any time, the pipeline can be shut down from the terminal, all the way back to the central production facility. Under an oil spill prevention plan and an oil spill contingency plan, both submitted to the PNG government, every tanker will be accompanied by a workboat equipped for emergency response. Stored at the marine terminal and at the Kopi encampment are stockpiles of boom, skimmers, and other spill cleanup equipment to protect the Kokori River and the Gulf of Papua coastline. Logistics have always presented a major challenge to the Kudabu project team. Helicopters provided transportation for all the drilling rigs and other equipment necessary for the exploration phase of the project. Using helicopters eliminated the need to construct an extensive system of roads, lessening environmental impact. Since completion of a new airstrip at Moro, Chevron has airlifted more than 60,000 tons of equipment and supplies using Hercules cargo planes. In the course of construction, more than 2,000 flights delivered materials from the eastern port city of Leh up to the highlands. With infrastructure development critical in PNG, and because of a strong desire from the local community, the development license for the Kudabu project calls for construction of a simple 71-mile gravel road between Porama and Moro. The cooperative building effort is expected to take two years, and involves the joint venture partners, landowner groups, and PNG provincial and national governments. That was uh, one of the biggest uh, contributions to the community. The road will cost 35 million kina. The people of Foy and Faso wanted a road because uh, it'll link up the whole highlands of the coast. It'll benefit them a lot in terms of uh, trading, uh, selling their vegetables and pineapples and what they grow in the, in, the, in the villages to sell out in Mendy or any part of the world. And it'll give them a little exposure to what's really happening in real PNG, especially in terms of changes and so forth. Villagers already have seen many of the changes catalyzed by the oil project. Through their own business development companies and with help from Chevron, villagers are seeing improvements in their lives. Through the effort of Chevron's medical staff, medical services for many villagers have been provided at Kudabu project facilities. But to bring better medical care to local communities, construction projects are underway and new equipment is arriving. Water tank construction throughout the Kudabu project area has raised the quality of supplies. Community schools also have received help. It's like in Kudabu, there's what, uh, one, two, four community schools. Four community schools. And one of them was closed for two years and recently, or Chevron, with their assistant of Chevron, it's just been open at Warrow. But uh, children live a couple of you know, miles away and they have to walk in every day kind of thing. 
and some of them stay in the villages, the nearest village, and go to school and then go mm. back to their villages on the weekend to get food to come and stay in the village to go to school. But it's, hard for it's very difficult for the kids up there. Kudabu project representatives also work with the people of PNG and government officials in a continuing effort to prevent unrealistic expectations. Mm -hmm.